Yeah. Um, okay, we good? Yeah. We're on, we're rolling. All right, should we do mask? I mean, we, we can't do the mask the entire time. Mask have oh. We all look like Darth Vader at this point, huh? <laughs> can it? Can you hear me? I mean, I probably sound better with a mask. Test, test. Test, test. <laughs> We probably, my, with my voice, I think I sound infinitely better with being muffled. Maybe, well, now mine mu sounds more muffled because it, it's my voice is naturally muffled. Is it? <laughs> I think so. I think people probably like this because they can picture me being suffocated and they probably <laughs> like it. They, do, <laughs> they can fulfill their fantasy of putting a pillow over my head <laughs> and suffocating me to death. <laughs> Which is, I think, a lot of people's fantasy. <laughs> Oh, did you make this no i didn't yeah. want i would love to i should get i probably could make them yeah it's a little like maxi patty like right yeah. here yeah like, i feel like we could pull we could taper it mine yeah yeah you're right it should go down like this yeah like if we could just we could i mean look we're in the early stages of wearing masks yeah i have a better one though yeah it was just yesterday i wore it and it got a little sweaty yeah, we. He, that's the other thing. You have to wash your mask. Yeah. Your mask is not hygienic if you don't wash it. It defeats the whole purpose of having one. Yeah. And that's a, a you know what, too? Be sure to have some fresh mints because you're smelling <laughs> your own breath in there. So take care. <laughs> be kind to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like wearing the masks because I can like scowl at people and they don't notice. I, I, it made me realize how much I like make faces at people <laughs> and how fun it is to be able to it's like an invisibility cloak like i feel like right. i can just go around and like stare at people and but see people. for me because i'm a smiley person yeah if i walk penny i want to I, I still like to smile at folks so i hope they know by my eyes that that's a good this might be I good mean, for you to stop stop my so smiling. many friends <laughs> This is the only way to fix, like, the fact that you're too nice. You're too inviting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is a great way to get people to think you're a bitch. Yeah, that's true. Okay, I'm starting to... Um, Take them It's off. starting to get swampy in here. <laughs> it gets... I know. It, it gets, gets very really swampy. High. So I'm going, like, here. I'm mm, going, like, here. Okay. Um, I always start the podcast asking the guest if we're friends, and I don't this say will, anything. This will be other... You know, when we, get, when we get back to dating it, they'll be like, can I take it off? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> okay well, wait wait i do want to talk about that yes how are we gonna go back today i don't i haven't even thought i haven't like i don't even know i don't even know <laughs> i mean is it gonna be because i am definitely inappropriately texting with someone that i shouldn't be texting with i think part of the reason i'm flirting with him and texting with him is that there is no chance that we can see each other I'm being so reckless because I know, right. you know, I know right. this can't go anywhere. So I'm just throwing grenades left and right. Right. I'm yeah. being so aggressive with someone, like to the point to where if <laughs> if this were to stop tomorrow, I'd be like, oh, now he's like, it, well, now so yeah, now what? I'd be like, <laughs> I didn't think this through. <laughs> like you're a DJ. No, like I was just <laughs> bored. I was bored. I had cabin fever. I thought this was a good idea. I mean, I am being so reckless in quarantine. I texted an ex on Sunday. I was so desperate for just some kind of It's like that, yeah, thrill. Attention. Yeah, 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 I yeah. just needed like some yeah. kind of to make a little drama for myself. Mm -hmm. I needed to get into a knot just to be able to untangle it. I needed some adrenaline. Yeah. I texted an ex. It was a relationship that ended horribly. And I just wrote, Happy Easter. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I saw you tweet that. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't stop laughing. And he just wrote back. He was like, what are you doing? I was like, hey, you want to fight? Want to fight? Let's fight. Please, let's fight. Happy Easter. <laughs> to a guy that, like, it ended, like, horribly. Oh, man. I know. I'm, anyway. I, I mean, I guess I sent some nudes. You sent some nudes? Melissa via Senor. There's a guy before this I, I hook up occasionally with, and that was... You know, same thing. It's just you just want a little like, oh damn, looking good. So you just feel, you know, alive for the day. Wait, I have two. <laughs> wait, you just threw two things at me. What? Number one, you're taking nudes, and number two, a guy you sleep with occasionally. I mean, what does that mean? Oh, I guess just a hookup. That's it. How is that? I've never hooked up with someone in my life without it being a full on. 
emotional entrenchment? I think most of mine have been hookups. So you don't get emotionally attached to these people? Uh, no, no, no. I, I think I do, but I think there's enough time and gap in between seeing them that I'm okay. Well, <laughs> Melissa, just so everybody knows, also the same person that, what? No, no, I was going to say, I, I, I'm not a, I don't, I haven't been, oh, go ahead. I don't know what I was going to say. I just wanted go to put it. Melissa's personality in context for everybody. Because yes. you know her as this charming, brilliant, elfin nymphette. <laughs> That has taken over SNL with all of her charming, brilliant, iconic impressions. But she's got a dark side. I do. They, I'm a little freaky. <laughs> <laughs> no one know. You know, I have like 11 tattoos. I have, you know, I have one on a rib cage, thighs. Uh -huh. I'm like, there's this little side that's like, oh, what? What's in here? In this? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a little. It's not a little side. <laughs> I, Melissa's a fucking straight up savage. We were in Vegas once. Melissa and I used to tour together. What? And I thought of Melissa as like the sweet little, like, like you're like a, um, like the princess from Super Mario Brothers 1, who's just like, beep, no. beep, beep, beep. I'm more beep, like beep, a toad. Beep. You're, <laughs> ow! <laughs> Careful. I just concussed myself on my <laughs> microphone. It's in a new configuration. I don't know. What did I do in Vegas? We were in Vegas. And you were dating someone, and I, you just strike me as like very innocent, very proper, very, um, just uh, pure. You strike me as very pure, sweet, innocent. I, elf. I do have that side, though. Yes. And we were talking, and, um, and I was like, you were talking about dating, and I was like, oh, God, now I'm going to have to hear this, like, girl talk about how much she likes this guy and how she wants to get married and how she <laughs> wants the whole thing. And I'm like, so how come you're not dating right now? And you just went, I just, I don't, I don't want to listen. <laughs> That's still how I feel today. I'm just like, damn. I'm just a fucking gangster. <laughs> like, gangster. Like, I don't want to listen to a man rant. I don't care. I just want that dick. Yes. <laughs> I don't want to hear where you went to school. I don't <laughs> care about it. So, like, so when you're listening to a guy <laughs> tell you about where he went to school, are you're just like, this is what I have to put up with in order to get that day. Yes. And then I think also I smile, you know, for, for stand up, for work, for yes. everyone. Yes. And so going on a date and being like, yeah, yeah. Did you go to, yeah. and it's like, I don't want to do, I don't want to. I know it, it feels like work. Yes, it, my face hurts. Just from having to listen to someone talk about themselves. Mm -hmm. Do you find that guys try to make you laugh and be funny around you? Um, I've gone on plenty of dates like that, but nothing these days because I just won't have it. You I think just... now my rule is it, when I go back on the dating scene, I just want, I better hear their voice on the phone, uh -huh. get their vibe before we even physically go out because I don't want to waste my time anymore with that. You better... <laughs> already be vibing with me to where we both laugh at the same beats but why is it that if a guy said this it would be so incredibly sexist i like that we're allowed to say this now oh. if we act like men it's like cool and triumphant and like feminist and badass if a guy said anything you were saying right. oh the comments <laughs> would be brutal right, right you would be dan bilzerian <laughs> you would be a monster you times <laughs> up on this like you know what i mean we're allowed to just be like, I want that dick. Don't want to hear what you have to say. I don't even want to hear you talk. Don't even care who you are. Right. Yeah. Well, whatever. It's we'd, You'd be Andrew Dice Clay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just literally. I'm, I do have a Dice Clay. But I think I, I think it's interesting. I think you definitely have been in relationships where you cared about the person. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, no. Yeah. I... I one and we've had this lots is of becoming such a metaphor because I think everyone's dog is exactly like them. Uh, uh -oh. Melissa's dog is currently just gnawing, gnawing on my no. hand savagely in a sweet way. Sorry, in a sweet way, Penny. No, I love it. Just if you guys hear gr furious growling, it's Penny. Oh, yeah, it's Melissa's inner monologue. Oh. So what happens? You don't want to be in a serious relationship. You just want no strings attached hookups. I think if I feel like, oh, this this dude's so cool, I I like him, I'd feel it. Mm -hmm. But if I just don't, I don't. But you can separate it. You can go, okay, this is not a person I should date. This is a person I could just sleep. Oh with. yeah, I think now now You're that I'm older, delineate. I'm like, oh yeah, that person clearly not at my level of of greatness. Because <laughs> I used to go, <laughs> this guy's like a C minus. 
let me just put a bunch of work. He's a fixer upper. Let me put a bunch right. of work into him, make him an A, and then he can be my boyfriend. You're able to go like, here's C plus. Let's just sleep together as I wait for the A plus to come along. <laughs> yes. Is that kind of That's how I roll. So you're I won't put the work. <laughs> I won't listen. I don't want to do the work. It is weird though, because if you're dating a guy who's hot and you start listening to talk about themselves, you're like, oh, someone has listened to this. <laughs> someone sat through this. Yeah, no. Someone pretended this was interesting at some point. So now yeah. I, I'm an asshole because I'm just not going to pretend. Mm -mm. Do you know what I mean? The girl before me set me up to look like a dick. She didn't want to hear this shit either. Man, you're so good. She pretended. So I have, I have two sets of bad news. Number one, everything you're saying is boring. And number two, the girl before you faked interest and orgasms. <laughs> so we need to regroup. But what are people supposed to talk about? Well, I don't know. That's why I, I haven't even... <laughs> what do you find interesting? <sighs> what can a guy talk to you about where you're not going to get bored? I don't... Actually, that's... I haven't even thought of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just think... <laughs> Where I'm at right now, I just feel like I'm here to bring joy. And I don't know about if I'm lucky to have a relationship, great. But I think I'm getting to a place where it's a hassle. It, if it happens, great. If it's not, such a I'm hassle. Not sweating it. But I, I don't want a wedding or kids. Really? Yeah. I don't think about it. I don't feel it in my heart or bones. Yeah. <laughs> Did you just. I just, <laughs> I don't feel it in my heart or bones. Why, why are, is that why we get along so well? First of all, yeah. give everyone a context of if we're friends or not. <laughs> I let the guests do it because I hate it when I go on podcasts and people are like, this is my really good friend Whitney. I'm like, bitch, I don't know you. Why are we pretending to these people we know each other? So I let the guests say how close we are. Well, I think we've gotten closer the past year, couple years. Yeah. Well, I opened for you on the road, but I was, I feel like in my 20s, very insecure. And you, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I think now we're, I'm getting We've to spent a, level. a lot of time together. Yeah. And you're like my mentor. <laughs> we're going to get into Melissa's impression of me at some point. I, I, there was <laughs> what is this? What are you? I remember, I, I feel like I, I used to be, I don't know, I was eating poorly and dressing real bad. I remember some shows where I was dressing weird. Agree. And you're, <laughs> you're Agree. I was wearing some weird shoes <laughs> with these baggy pants. And you're Melissa like, used to dress like the boys from Stranger Things. <laughs> I was just like, what is that? Where is that from Aldo? Men's? The men's section? She, she dressed like yeah, an Amish was, carpenter. Yeah, yeah, so she dressed like a janitor in an Arthur Miller we Broadway at a play. We were Flappers Club and I was there and, and you were like, okay, what is this? <laughs> don't wear this ever again. <laughs> Those shoes, they don't even... They don't fit you. And then one, the, the next time we were in San Francisco and I wore like skinny jeans and uh -huh. some Nikes and you're like, yes. <laughs> wear that on stage because... It just looks better. It like fits. You probably feel better too, right? You yeah. used, you dressed like an Amish farmer for like the cuts of your pants were very like I don't even know where you're buying the like are you going to Chico's? Like I didn't even know where you were finding these clothes. Is that Oshkosh Bagosh? Like I was like, where are you finding these? I think these? it was a lot of gap and some like, old navy and they were like bell bottoms that were like corduroy. I was like, is it was a taupe corduroy. I was like, you're so beautiful and you have such a great body. Like, what are you, why are you, are you transitioning? Like, I don't, I, I don't know. I didn't understand like, I don't. Your, your gender call. Like, I was like, maybe this is the new gender thing. I don't understand. I just, I think I go through wacky f things. No, I do too. I mean, I, when, and I also, it reminded me of me. And I was like, I think I know what you're doing. Let me save you a couple years. Yeah, because you... Yes. You dress like me when I started. Yeah. I would wear hoodies and completely like try to like neuter myself, desexualize myself. Yeah. I would wear bell bottoms, uh, like old ratty t-shirts, like sports bras, hoodies, and right. like backpacks and sneakers. Well, we both started young and we're both hot babes. We're both when hot I, bitches when, that just want dick. <laughs> we don't want to no, listen. No, no, no. I do. I just... <laughs> No, but when I, I started, I was 17 going to Ha Ha Cafe well, Open Mic. That's mics. crazy. That's and crazy. And I, you know, I was a little, I was felt like a little girl. 
and I felt like oh nothing but older men around me and I've I've had to figure out that's why I my voice is also it amplified it I subconsciously or maybe consciously I was like I need to make myself weird so no one uh, attacks me you know you know I want to wow. be funny so I think I also made my voice this way that's fascinating I think I did that with <laughs> being loud and nasal and being dirty with my comedy I was like, I'm going to be as dirty as possible so that I to kind of find some, neuter myself and make myself yeah. like put a shield up so that no one sexualizes me. Mm -hmm. I know. Like it's like a, a way of degendering myself. And then I, I think once something works, I remember Neil Brennan told me this once and I think it's so true. He was like, your style freezes when you get successful because you're subconsciously, you're just like, well, this is what worked. And it's just the thing that works. Yeah. Because he, for the longest time, would only dress like... A, like street kid from the 90s which was like exactly how he dressed when the Chappelle show happened he would still wear like orange hoodies with like purple shirt it was like 90s hip-hop kid and then he just why would you change something that was working do you know what I mean oh yeah do you know what I'm saying yeah. and then he was like oh I think I can change the way I dress and I'll still be successful it's just you sort of your brain it's like we're designed to look for patterns like pattern right like this is what right worked. right right this is what worked yeah. it's like me with my hair in a ponytail on stage it's just like I wear a ponytail and I can only be funny if I have the ponytail like I just associated right. it subconsciously yeah with the system that worked mm -hmm. you know it makes sense so I feel like I saw you in these like bell bottoms <laughs> And these like weird bounty hunter <laughs> dog, the bounty hunter shoes. And I was like, okay, I think she like thinks she has to do this, but she doesn't have to. Yeah. You yeah. Can take the armor off. Yeah. And, and like, now I, I feel like I've gotten on a good place on stage where it still could be tomboy, but then there's this bright color that I could bring too. And it feels like it a nice It just doesn't feel balance. like a costume. Yeah, 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 yeah. It doesn't feel like yeah. a costume anymore. Yeah. I just sort of was like... You know, it was a little Tim Allen there for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you did dress. Like, Tim Allen. <laughs> you did dress like Tim Allen. And I just yeah, went, I, I did have a lot of blazers, too. Yeah, a lot it of was tweed very, ones. very Paula Poundstone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was very, like, I didn't know if it was a character. Like, I was just like, I think this might be, like, a, her, yeah. a part of her thing. And we all have our blankies. We all have our thing that makes us feel safe. But I was like, I felt something that it just didn't feel congruous. It was just like, yeah. oh, good, she settled down. Oh, Penny's sleeping. Good, good, good. But I think that I also, did you feel like you didn't want to be sexual at all in the beginning? Oh, yeah. 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 Well, you definitely managed to desexualize yourself Thank with you. those shoes. Good. Yes. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> I, I see what you're there. doing, but those have to go. <laughs> if you want that that one night stand dick, <laughs> you're gonna have to get rid of those gender non-conforming. I doc, think they were Clarks. Doc Martins. Yeah. Clogs? No, Clarks. What's our Clarks? Clarks are those like yeah, they were popular. You know Unisex. The, you know the I don't old know if lady people that wear lives now. in the shoe? Yes. Where like the bulbous front of the shoe. <laughs> that's what you're it was like a steel toe. Like a like an like a do you know what I'm saying? It was like an Amish bulbous cartoon shoe. The lady that lives in the shoe shoe. That actually feels like my soul though, the lady that lives in the shoe. It does track. That is your essence and brand. <laughs> <laughs> but that doesn't mean you can't be a hot right. bitch. Okay. Thank you. Okay, okay. good. <laughs> <laughs> so okay so that's so we are how would you define our relationship like how close are we i think we're beginning to get closer i think mm -hmm. i think i think i and also melissa is very literal she's incapable of being full of shit she will think of the answer before she just starts mouthing off unlike most people i think i i felt when we first start, like when we first, when I first started going on the road with you, I felt like, oh, she's Whitney's up here and I'm down here, type of feeling. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I always was a maybe a little afraid of That's Whitney. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> but now I think I can't picture you being afraid of me. I think I was just nervous because I, I want to do a good job for your shows, and and I, I think I was really in a place of beating myself up a lot. Did too, too. good of a job. Melissa would go out kill so hard. Mm -hmm. She would go out and kill so hard. She would close with an impression of me <laughs> that killed so hard I couldn't follow it. <laughs> People didn't. When I actually came out, it was a letdown because people <laughs> just wanted to see her doing the impression no, no, of me. No. Yes, hundred percent. Um, but now I think with my growth mm -hmm. and 
work and, and life, I don't know, I think an experience, I feel I and, feel closer to and you. Side dicks. And and yes. And <laughs> it's not a lot. It's just here and there, a couple of them. But so let me ask you something. <laughs> I want to get back to the side dicks. Because I'm fascinated by this new sort of species of women that can just sleep with guys and not be like, what's up tomorrow? Are we te like Well, no, no. I I believe there's always a an attachment layer. I, I think so. Yes. You just, but it's manageable. It's manageable because it's not like I, 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 if I keep myself busy, I don't know. Or no, you just I get make it. sure it's a guy that you can't see yourself being in a serious relationship with so you know where the person stands. Yes. I'm think because I am yes. at 37 years old after being, excuse me, I'm burping, only in relationships. I'm kind of a relationship person. I go from relationship to relationship. And as a relationship ends, I kind of start the next one. And then I'm always in like, I'm either getting in one, getting out of one, or in a bad one. Like, I'm always in... Right? And see, I've been alone most of the time, and I've had a couple of relationships. Hmm. I'm always in some kind of entanglement, and I would like to, at 37 years old, have an affair. Just a no-strings-attached affair, and I don't know how to go about doing it without being like, so do you live here now? Like, to just oh. go, like, we're going to have sex, and you're going to go home, and we'll talk in a couple right. days. Oh. How do I go about it? I think I'm funny. <laughs> I think I say like, well, let's get this going, hot but stuff. You, but <laughs> hubba hubba. No, I think I say something kind of so like that. You say something that like my uncle said in the <laughs> 70s to his secretary? Yes. Hot stuff. I think I do say something like that. Okay. And I think it's cute. That is cute. That's really endearing. And you say it over text? Yes. Okay. Or it, sometimes I slide into d d direct messages. You initiate? Oh, yeah. I Because once I had this talk with Georgia, I was like, Georgia, why don't guys ask me out? And she was like, well, why don't you ask your guy friends and see what they say? Oh, that's why? such a great Georgia. We have oh, the my same gosh. therapist. I know. She's a genius. And, and I was like, okay, fine. I'll ask my guy friends. Why aren't guys asking me out? And they... All, most of them said was like, well, I think because we're intimidated by you. Uh -huh. you, you. And it also s appears to seem that like you already have someone at your level. Like you're already right. at content in that world. Or, and, and I'd be like, no. So then once I understood that, I was like, oh, okay, then I'm going to do the reach out to. Uh -huh. And then I would ask people. You're going to do the most intimidating thing <laughs> that a woman I, can fucking do. I, yeah. I, I asked. I started asking. There was a, I think last summer I was like, I'll ask him out. I'll ask him out. Yeah. And then they said, yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I'm a golden prize <laughs> and I'm a treat to have. F I am yes. so much. I'm cool. Yeah. Yeah. I got an electric guitar. <laughs> I, I draw. Oh, but it's. <laughs> but once I realized, OK, then I'm going to do it. I've they got said, a yes. Sick body. Yeah. Your body is sick. Thanks, Whitney. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so is that your opening line? I draw. I mean, that's what I just think of myself. I'm like, man, I've gotten really cool. Yeah, I agree. You're a fucking <laughs> catch, dude. Thanks. You're a fucking catch. No, but I think that for me, I never want to initiate with guys because I'm like, oh, guys don't want like an alpha. Guys want to chase. Guys are hunters. But if I it's know. not to be your husband, if like the fact that we even fucking have to think that way is so ridiculous. I'm like, I need to completely recalibrate the way that I think about meeting guys because for the longest time i was conditioned to only go you have to approach this as if the end game is to be a wife right i mean but that's probably tr i mean don't chase sense. don't do too much be small be cute I know. let him rescue you let him be feminine make him chase don't make any first moves but now that i'm like <laughs> if the goal is just fucking someone i don't all those all of that, that condition goes out. <laughs> goes out the window i know like, I'm at the point where I'll text, like, this one guy that I'm flirting with, I'll text him and I'll be like, hey, what's up? And if I don't respond in an hour, I'm like, hey, do you have my text? What's up? <laughs> like, I don't give a fuck anymore. Because if a guy likes you, none of that shit matters. I straight yeah. up am texting with this guy that he, I will show you the text. Wait. Hey. <laughs> Does give he a, listen to I, this? I, if, it's fine if you are. <laughs> I could talk about you right now, and if you're into me, you'll be fine with it. If you're not, you're right. nothing I do is yeah, going to yeah, repel yeah, yeah, you. Yeah. I have yeah. no control over how long or how I much you that. like me. I love that. I don't give a fuck. He's also 30. <laughs> Good. <laughs> fuck it. Don't give a fuck, okay? So he, um, we're like texting, and I go onto his Instagram at like 2 in the morning, and I had had a Lunesta, bad move, 
and I liked a photo from seven years ago by accident. My thumb's just rusty. Liked it, and I went, you know, I'm just gonna leave it. <laughs> Fuck it. Like the next morning, he goes, You are such a stalker who likes a photo from seven years ago. And then I was like, laughing for 40 minutes. <laughs> Don't give a fuck. If you want me, you want me. You're in or you're out. I love it. And then I talked about him on the Kelly and Ryan show. <laughs> and he was like, did you just talk about <laughs> me on the Kelly? And I was like, yeah, I did. <laughs> like, I, if you're into this, you're in. That's so cool. There's no, I have wasted so much of my life trying to like construct and shape shift in, be, into being the girl that I think you want based on some social construction I saw. Damn, from, Whitney, this is great. From what, I'm like proud a of Catherine you. Heigl movie? Like, I don't even know who I'm trying to impersonate. Yeah, no, I don't. It you're, I'm just going to do me, and you're either in or you're out. My bills get paid either way. Ooh, yeah, do you me I mean? too. My bills get paid either way, and there will be a guy who is, you know, yeah down who's the hottest actor to you um i mean javier bardem okay all the way okay i, we, I like that yeah you like uh like what? michael b jordan i mean these Ooh. that's yeah. perfect but also hold on wait what about javier bardem is his so white guys are off the table for you i'm done with white guys <laughs> what what happened time's up time's up yeah what happened no, I, no, I, what? Just besides generally just being boom, racist. Just, no, no, <laughs> no, no. I got sick of putting sunscreen on them. No. I got sick of. No, I just, I'm just like, I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I feel just new, new chapter of my life. <laughs> just new pigmentations yeah. ahead. Yeah. So is that a conscious effort? Like if a white guy comes at you? No. Yeah. I, I'm, my heart's open. You'll make an exception for a white guy. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. But I, but. Lately, it's been, yeah, I like black guys. <laughs> um, uh, now, listen, Javier Bardem. I actually have, I'm going to, you know what? If we're going to do this, let's do this. If you date black guys, I have a warning for you. Okay. Sometime, this is the, this is the only time I was like, oh, this is a, a, a different fight than I've ever had okay. with a white guy. I was in his bathroom. And I personally feel that about four months into dating someone, you're allowed to go through their drawers. That's just my personal philosophy. I, I went through his drawers and found, you know, you'll find makeup, you'll find, you know, it's just sort of like a whose is this? Like, you know, is this old? Is this new? You know, is this Bath and Body Works? How old was she? Why did you, why do you have plumeria? <laughs> Bath and Body Works, Spark. Moonlight Path was spark. my favorite in high school. Well, who wants to smell like a path? <laughs> a moonlit path smells like fucking it dirt so, and no, earthworms. So <laughs> a moonlit path smells like a fucking rapist in the night. What? What do you? Why? They're, no, it smelled good. But but moonlit paths don't. <laughs> Have you smelled a path recently? It's fucking mulch and dirt. And <laughs> bugs. Oh man, you're making me, you know being near you yeah. is making me tougher. Really? Do you notice this? Just in right the six now. Yeah, just hanging out right now, energy wise. We're good I'm, for each know, other. It's really good. We're for good me. for each other. We bring out good sides of each other. Yeah. You make me very calm, and you, when I'm around you, I don't feel like I have to be funny. Oh, good. And I don't feel like I have to apologize for being powerful. Yeah. <laughs> and when you're around me, I think you get stronger. Thanks. Thanks, Whitney. You're the best. Oh my God. Um, what was I saying? Moonlit path. Disgusting. <laughs> so sometimes you're in <laughs> your guy's place and you, you're going to come across a cosmetic from a previous relationship and you're going to read into it. If it's a Victoria's Secret shimmer, you're like, he dates strippers. What is, you know, <clears throat> you're going to start some kind of fight. Mm hmm. Or like a guy that I dated once found makeup in his drawer and it ended very awkwardly because I was like, whose is this? And he was like, it's mine. So that's a whole other thing. You uh, could also find out the guy you're dating uses concealer and that's a whole other conversation. Whoa. But if you're dating a black guy, there's a chance you're going to find jewelry. Oh. And it's going to be his. And you're going to have to believe him. But that's cool. I know, but I was like, oh, whose diamond earrings are those? Oh. <laughs> And he was like, those are mine. <laughs> Give them back. And I was like, that's not a fight I've ever had with a white guy. 
So I stand corrected. And <laughs> so sorry about that. <laughs> um, here you go. Yeah. And those are um, yours. Fair enough. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> With any white guy, this would be a huge uh, fight. Can I borrow him? <laughs> and, no. And, okay. and, and, and then for Valentine's Day, I got little fucking gold balls. Didn't get the diamonds. Oh, I know you so know funny. the jeweler's number. I know you know where to get the big diamonds, but you got them for yourself and not for me. You should not have better jewelry than me. That, whatever. That is an irreconcilable difference. Oh, that's so So funny. just get ready for okay. that. That's, that's good to know. Thanks. So... <laughs> So what are we going to do in quarantine? So we're flirting with guys. Are we hooking up? No, I haven't. Maybe early on in the started. Yeah. Maybe, but that was it. Yeah. So you have how many guys in the rotation currently? Oh, no, just, I mean, I guess just one in New York. Yeah. And it, it do you date other people? Or it, do you get jealous if they, or you don't talk about but, it? See, I... <sighs> That's something I do need to be careful. I need to be honest and be like, are you hooking up with other people? Do you want to know? I don't want to know. I don't like to, I'm finally at a point in my life where I don't ask questions if I don't want to know the answers. It yeah. took me a long time. Where'd you just go? I know what, I just, I just, I just went to, you know, I don't, I, you know what I like to think of it as? If you're not emotionally attached to the guy, I like to think of it as he's practicing on his days off. <laughs> hurts my feelings <laughs> practice with me <laughs> just broke my heart my heart just broke <laughs> my heart just I'd broke see, but yeah. see there it is it's like there is but you don't want to be in you don't want to be yeah you sort of that's when you realize if you're attached to the person or not you can say can we exclusively hook up with each other and if you want to date someone else you just have to tell me and we'll call it see that's that's good that's mm -hmm. being healthy I. that's what I need to say yes yeah I mean that that'll have to do. I'm happy to not up, do the girlfriend boyfriend thing. Not my style, but I would like to exclusively be in a sociopathic, no strings attached, fuck fest with you. Mm -hmm. But you can't do that with anyone else. Is that being together? That's your together. I don't know. I, I don't. don't I still don't know. Hmm. I don't know anything about. So what about the nudes? How? What are those nudes? Look no, like? no, that was just one recent. Okay. How? What? How much? <laughs> new, how much are we showing? Mm -mm. I, <laughs> Oh, neck down? No face. I try to avoid face because of internet. Yeah. But they can Photoshop your face on the naked bodies. Those are everywhere. That's true. Have you looked at yours? What? No. I haven't either. I don't want to see. Okay, I'm just going to check to see. I the I always get Photoshopped onto porn stars in wedding dresses getting <laughs> fucked, which is so weird. Oh, no. Um, no. Naked. Oh, it's not going to come up on there. So if Please I don't. Google you naked. Please don't. No, I'm just, I'm it's so not going to come up. No one's going to see it except me. You are not Photoshopped onto a lot of naked people. I, what people do with me is when I'm holding a microphone on stage, they, <laughs> oh. and I'm going that, they put a dick in my mouth. So I've got a bunch of those. That's, yeah. That's easy. There's no naked photos of you online at all. Not even Photoshopped fake ones. I'm always, it always hurts my feelings, the body they choose. I'm always like, that's what they think. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? My boobs are fake. Don't put some pancake titties <laughs> on my body in Photoshop. I've worked hard to not have pancake titties. Okay, so you're only doing neck down and full naked, full everything. Like oh, standing yeah. up in the mirror? Wow. Standing? Yeah. Like with one leg out? <laughs> I think I might pose. Like it's like a this. In the mirror? Yes. Okay. Because this is a good one. Up to down. Never done that. Oh, because you can't have your face in it. In a mirror. Jeez. In a mirror sideways is, is the my go-to. Yeah, because then the butt is like... The bam, butt is slamming. And then the, and the waist is like... Bam. The abs are... Can I literally took one this morning. Right, didn't send it to anyone. Because the, the shadow of the lighting. And then your the, boobs look in good the morning. from the side. Yeah, it looks really high. Yeah. And so what time are you sending these photos? I mean, this look, this was just a couple, like, a couple weeks ago. It's... A new person? No, same dude. Well, because I think he's the hottest. Because here's my deal: is when when you're dating someone, do you want them to see you naked in person before they see you naked in a selfie? Am I allowed to send a naked photo to a guy I'm dating who's never seen me naked? Whoa, um, I don't think I've done that before. No. Once they see you naked, you're then sending it as little tidbits, little snacks. I'll be like, like, remember this? Remember this? Remember this? <laughs> just, just. <laughs> 
<laughs> just want to keep this fresh in your mind. Yeah. And my quarantine body is not slipping. I am not slipping. Right, over right, here. right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's just like after we've done it, then I'm like, you know, here's here. Don't here forget. Don't forget. And do they send dick pics? Mm-hmm. Really? I mean, it's it's nice when I get I like to see the Oh, he's got abs. <laughs> you look really forlorn over this person. <laughs> I mean, we he's do hot. we do have cabin fever. I do think there is a very intense horniness kicking it's like in bubbling under, with like everyone. A with everyone. Yes. I started flirting with my vet. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. Wow. Straight up. I think this cabin yeah, fever is be, starting to get to us. Yeah, I think. So what is it? I, I do not enjoy. I like getting dick pics. Everyone on the show knows because I like seeing bath people's bathrooms. Oh, yes. But I don't. The actual seeing of a dick. I, I'm not like, let me just do that. Like, I don't. That doesn't like turn me on. I, I think I, I'm with you there. Yeah. But I, I sometimes will fantasize. Uh huh. You know. But I think that also what turns me off is not so much the dick itself, it's the taking of the, like, imagining the guy being, like, picking an angle and, like, <laughs> getting it hard and, like, p like taking five and then picking the best one. Like, that is unattractive to me. Just the process <laughs> of it. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I'm saying? Because then he's got, like, five on his phone that he didn't send. <laughs> and I know guys have a good one ready to go. I know that guys have a stock dick photo. They have a little heart. Do you know what I mean? It. Like, yeah. yeah. And then if you look in the background, you can kind of see clues. It's like, is that a, like, a <laughs> Ross Perot sticker in the background? You didn't take that <laughs> in the last year. <laughs> Why is Lost playing in the background? This isn't a new photo. <laughs> this isn't a recent photo. Like, guys take one that is, like on um, point <laughs> and they save it and they just send it out you know what i'm saying oh i don't think God, we're that's... getting i don't think we're getting new ones every time i don't think we're getting custom <laughs> dick pics oh my god you're right don't yeah. you think yeah, whitney you're Is so it... smart <laughs> i really given this a lot of thought one time a guy sent a friend of mine a picture of his dick with another woman's like hand on it it was very confusing I think he like t I think that was like a photo they shared and he was yeah. like oh but here's a dick pic and he just didn't see the French manicured nail wrapped around it. Yeah, it was a bummer. It was also yeah. a picture of a photo. <laughs> a picture of Oh, so he Yes, had it it, this out. was his photo. Yeah, this was it. <sighs> well, what's like your f number one red flag for dudes? Mm -hmm. If a guy slides in your DM, what's the number one thing he should not do? Is it ask you about work? Is it I'm an aspiring comedian? Is it? Uh, yeah, I don't like either of those. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You've dated comedians, though. Oh yeah, I I'm I still feel like a comedian might be it because they're just so fucking funny, and yeah. that's the hottest thing to me. Oh wow, interesting. One of the hottest. Yeah, I just love laughing. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the best. Um, <laughs> red flag. Red flag. Wife. Something. Oh, yeah. Wife, <laughs> kids. Kids? You wouldn't take a guy with kids? Mm, I guess I did once. Oh, okay. How'd that go? Oh, bad. Bad? Oh. I mean, it didn't work out. Well, I guess, yeah. Every um, but I, I don't, man, I don't know my yeah. red flags. Yeah. I do. I did make a list, list like you. Yeah. That was good. Yeah. That's, I made you do that, right? Yeah. Good work. I make people do lists of all of their red flags, which is a big one. Do you remember what they were? I do think a big one with you is somebody has to like their job. I don't care what your job is, but you oh, have to yeah. like it. If you're not, I don't care what your job is. Yeah. You can be a janitor as long as you love your job. Because when, when people love their jobs and someone comes home and doesn't, it's just like, it makes things so hard because you can't commiserate. For sure. When someone comes home and they hate their job, I'm like, well, I had an awesome day today. Like I got to podcast with someone I love. Like it's just, yeah. it ends up sort of uh, making the relationship toxic. Yeah, I, I think both people have to like their jobs the same amount. Mm -hmm. You can both hate your job or you can both love your job. You can't yeah. have one or the other. I've never lived with anyone, so I don't know that. But that that is for sure mm -hmm. would be. Do you not want to live with someone? No, I think I, I I would. It's very hard. I I don't I don't know if I can do it. I've because never done. I don't know. I I'm, I'm gonna have to learn how to share though. Share share things. space and and think i'm very um yeah i'm not i'm pretty picky we're loners i mean comedians are used to being in hotel rooms 80 percent of the year alone and like we're good yeah you know 
and we can entertain ourselves. Are you this way too when you're when you go on the road? The day before or, or the day going, I'm frustrated. I'm like, I don't want to go and leave home. I don't want to go. And then once I get there and do the show, yeah. and I'm like, oh, that's right. I have my fans. I can explore this town, yeah. find good food. <laughs> then I'm fine. Yeah. And I get in a groove. Yeah. But it's always that day leaving. And I'm like a little fresh. You don't like traveling. You like performing. Yeah. That's yeah, what, that's we get. what it is. That's what I, that's I always say. Is. We don't get paid to perform. We get paid to travel. Yeah. The performing we do for free. Yeah. We get paid to get on the plane and the TSA. And right, the, right, da, da, right. And the, which I would die to give anything to do right I now. Know. I actually miss traveling, which I never thought I'd say. But yes, we, we that's too. what you get paid for. And then when you get in and realize, oh, I get to perform for a bunch of people and make them laugh. Mm-hmm. You know? So I have a question for you. Oh, give it. Have there been hobbies that you've been, I don't know, crafting, doing anything during this time, being home? Uh, no, Melissa. Okay. No. <laughs> Just to know if you <laughs> started uh, knitting am, or am something. Am I improving myself in any way? The answer is no. no you don't need to improve. Am Just I to... developing any new skills or um, advancing <laughs> my brain at all? No, my my mind has completely atrophied. Um, in fact, I've gotten okay. worse at the things I'm good at. <laughs> not only am I not learned new skills, here's what I have done. I have cooked a bit. Oh, nice. See, that's a, what I should do. It took I'm, a pandemic. I cooking. Yeah, I'm fully, now that I don't think I want to get married, I've become a wife. <laughs> I can cook, I can clean. Um, I've been working, you know, like I have to write a couple things. And I have not learned new skills, but I did get a mountain bike. Ooh. Yeah, so I'm going to like start to like mountain bike. That's cool. Yeah, that's like my new thing. And I want to like get in like sick, like crazy, like prison shape. Oh. <sighs> Oh, like so I'm getting in like cool. like gnarly shape. Yes, and that's really it. That, that I was love the only that. Two. And then I'm trying to like work and read. I've been doing the master classes. I've been I've been watching those. Oh, yeah. Should I watch some? They're I've amazing. Never done any They're class. fucking fantastic. We had David Sedaris on, and I watched his because I didn't know what it was. I was like, is this some like boring? It's like the TED Talk. Like, what am I watching? And it's like brilliant people break down all sorts of things. It's oh. super cool. Interior design and science and Neil deGrasse Tyson's is really amazing. Like, it's just, they're, I don't think I'd do it if we weren't in quarantine, but I yeah. love them. It's like kind of like going back to school. That's it's like a very small stuff. commitment. Yeah. Oh, cool. You've been what? Knitting and crocheting and micro macrame. To be honest, yeah, I, I, I'm a busy gal. Yeah. I, I, I crochet. I, I draw a lot. I get a lot of I, like drawing ideas just come to me. They pop it in my head. Yeah, and that's you're an where incredible I, illustrator. And then I, um, I don't know. I, yeah, I take guitar lessons online. Also, let me ask you, what is your, I was researching this before you came in. So Melissa, as you guys know, is brilliant at impressions. I'm obsessed because this is a gift. This isn't something you can really, I could never be good at impressions. It's not something I get to work on. It's not something I can pay for. It's a gift. Do you know yet what the thing is in your brain that is different? Because oh. it's something about your hearing and ability to mimic because none of us can hear our voices the way they actually sound. So even if I was good at an impression, I wouldn't be able to ascertain if I was good or not because we can't hear ourselves the way other people hear us. So you have the ability. Whoa. You have the ability. I'd love to find out. You have the ability to make people hear you the way you hear you, which I can't do. Does that make sense? No. <laughs> See, Melissa will always be honest with me. Scientists <laughs> have identified what happens in our brain when we mimic a foreign accent or impersonate another person, according to a recent study from the Journal of Cognitive Neuroscience. The researchers, led by all these fucking people, they want to explore the way the brain controls the nonverbal aspects of our speech, the different tones or styles people use when talking in different contexts. Um, when, when subjects consciously change their voices, either a new accent or, imperson or during impersonation, the left anterior insula and interior frontal gyrus areas associated with planning and producing speeches lit up in the fMRI images. Impressions in particular generated greater responses than other in other regions of the brain, the posterior, supporial, temporal, inferior, parietal cortex. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I've become illiterate in quarantine. And right middle, anterior, superior, temporal, succulus, Jesus. But there was no difference in the increase in activity 
in the LIFG between accent and personation planning. Okay, this is like too hard for me to even understand. But it's something also about your ability, the way your ear is like inner ear is shaped or something. Whoa. Yeah, isn't that cool? That's neat. Because we don't know how we sound, right? And so for you to be able to do an impression of whatever it is and then know how it's sounding and then improve it or know That's you're nailing so cool. it is something most people can't do. Like, because wow. it's also, you. Do, there's no one that's good, like impression is like 90% good. It's either 100% or zero. Mm -hmm. There's no like, that's a pretty good impression. It's, yeah. it's excellent or awful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I think there's some that, like the ones of, the ones where I could really look like, like you or Sarah Silverman or people like, those I could say like, those are my A plus I'm them. I yeah. see your face on my face. That's yeah. what happens in my brain. I see you, you, your, your whole face is here. That's what, how I see it. But if, uh, it's someone like my Sebastian Maniscalco impression, those <laughs> silly ones, they're, they're not exact cause I'm not the guy, but I, I, I'm learning that whatever's making me feel funny and have fun it doesn't, but that's the key to impressions also. Interesting. It's like, if I, you know, just, what is going on over here? <laughs> then it's, because <laughs> I'm, I'm having so much fun. That's, that is the main thing. And you know that with stand-up. It's like, <laughs> if you're having so much fun, people will just be in tune. it's also like the level of commitment. <laughs> is so intense but it also works because sebastian's level of commitment is so intense i know so almost like to impersonate sebastian you just have to commit as hard to the impression yeah as that's he commits true. to his stand-up yeah like oh, i just i best. i couldn't like do it like i have to bail because <laughs> i get too uncomfortable i get embarrassed that i'm gonna fail at it so i just bail but if you love i mean yeah maybe that's where it is it's some it's people that i I love so much and I just, I don't know. I just want to feel like they're with me. Type that's of so fat. That's like a, a interesting, like spiritual, like element of it. That's what, yeah. I feel like you want to like embody them. Yeah. I think that's a lot of my impressions are like, oh, this person brings me like Owen Wilson brings me some peace, you know, just, yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> Was that too? your first impression? And that was one of my first, yeah. Is That's that why the first time you realize you can do an impression? No, no. First one was Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, all the pop princesses of the, you know. Don't worry, guys. I'm going to make her do them. Don't worry. Yeah. Uh, oh, Whitney. <laughs> Whitney and Britney. Yeah. I was just listening to I'm a Slave for You last night. It's still a banger. It's so It's good. a banger. Bang, bang. Oh, you people look at me like I'm a little girl. Oh, do you ever mean nothing that I was happening in this world? And then, when you get ridiculous, <laughs> <laughs> it's, just like, it's like so much more than she would do when you're doing that thing. <laughs> Who does not feel the need to wash her hair because I'm obsessed with this dry shampoo? It's got biotin in it. Look how good. Look. Oh, God, it tastes good, too. I am obsessed with this dry shampoo. It is by Hask Beauty. Thank you guys so much. This was incredible, too, because it has charcoal in it, so it sucks up all the impurities in your hair, of which I have many. Look how much cuter my hair looks when I have this in. Hask is all about second day hair. First day hair is out. This is your hair gets cuter and more textured over time. Color safe, it's not gonna mess with your color, okay? Not that I color my hair or anything or have to cover my grays, cause I don't. No parabens, no artificial colors, no gluten formulated to meet the needs of your specific hair type and my hair needs Charcoal and biotin and chia seeds. There's one with chia seeds in it that I love too. Yeah. 
Oh, and it has French on it. Absorption durable de l'excuse. Ce boom sans sulfé sa parabines. Hask Dry Shampoo Collection is available on Amazon.com as well as online and in store at Ulta, Walmart, Walgreens, Target, CVS. We're very excited to announce that Hask is hosting weekly giveaways for our listeners. Ooh, you're going to get free Hask. You can win a $100 prize that includes shampoos, conditioners, leave in sprays. You're going to want this one dry shampoos, and more. For a chance to win, enter the giveaway at haskbeauty.com slash Whitney. That's haskbeauty.com slash Whitney. And we thank them so much for sponsoring this podcast and making me look my most sexual self. Next, sexy. All right, it's a crazy time. No one wants to go to the grocery store. The idea of having to go somewhere to get your food is a living nightmare. Thank God for Daily Harvest, or else I would have starved to death about two weeks ago. Um, Daily Harvest makes it easy to have clean, healthy food without even trying. They send you these, like, cute little containers of pre-made food. And as you guys know, um, I cannot cook to save my life because I just shan't. I just... I just can't be a wife to save my life. But Harvest is like having your own wife. They send you food that's already put together, like smoothies that are already mixed, like fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, like soups. It is the only reason that I do not have scurvy at the moment. Never uses preservatives, no added sugar, no artificial ingredients. They work directly with farms and they freeze organic fruits and vegetables at peak ripeness. Excuse me. Peak ripeness. I think that's going to be the name of my next special. To lock in nutrients and taste. Um, my favorite is the smoothies. Like they come like blueberry uh, and greens in it and everything, which I think is the only reason that I don't totally look like the Grand Canyon at this point. Um, it is so good. And then you just put a, I put a little bit of um, like soy milk in it and then like blend it up. That's it. Don't have to go anywhere. I don't have to go get germs. Don't have to go get an invisible virus. I can just stay home and get my nutrients right from my freezer. It's a goddamn miracle. Makes me feel like um, a human again. Daily Harvest also committed to minimizing their environmental impact. I love this company. They're uh, in the process of transitioning to 100% compostable, recyclable packaging and are over 50% of the way there already. And they're good for the environment. This place is amazing. Uh, go to dailyharvest.com, enter promo code good for you, and you're going to get $25 off your first box. That's promo code good for you for $25 off your first box at dailyharvest.com. Good food is going to come to you. You don't have to go to it. You just want to go to dailyharvest.com, have the fresh food come to you. Keep that immune system strong, folks. You're doing ASMR with that water? I'm drinking water right now. I'm drinking water right now. It's so gross. Ew. It's so gross. It's so sexual. <laughs> ASMR always it sends, sounds like a vagina to me. Like a like sex. It always sounds like sex to me. Ew. Ew. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's just your mouth. Ha- like... Yeah, it's that's nasty. Fucking, it's like, ooh, it's just you the cotton mouth thing. Yeah, I don't like it when I, you know, you're you're in a car. You have a, I mean, I feel remember going on the road and someone would pick me up from the airport and yeah, or and they're the driver. You can hear him go, <gasps> or you know, just a little sound like yeah. that could just. Do you? Oh, well, you know what? This probably has a lot to do with the fact that you're good at impressions. You, ha- you have some kind of superhuman hearing that you're able to hear and mimic people. Yeah. So you might have misophonia, which is what I have, even though I'm not good at impressions. Yeah. I mean, that's why I, I, I was working on a bit before this about how um, I think I'm, I'm the trouble in relationships and dating because I find out the smallest quirk about a person and I go, I'm out. Ooh, I don't too. like to do that thing. You do that too much. Yeah. I'm gone. Are you, do you give it a second to go, could you not do that? Is it worth? You? I don't even ask. I just leave. Uh-huh. Like whistling? Don't. Have you ever thought about asking them to not whistle? No. Around you? I'm not. It's not, I'm not, not even going to put the time in. I, I should have, I, that's what I, I'm a, I'm a coward. I, I could say, ask a person kind of like, can you just please don't whistle? 
But I think that would really hurt their feelings. But my guess is you don't like them that much if that's the straw that breaks the camel's back. That's true. And I also think that things that annoy you about people you're not that into, you find charming with the ones that you are into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? That if it was, sense. if Michael B. Jordan was whistling in your hallway, you'd be fine with it. Right. <laughs> you're right. You're right. <laughs> you, would, you would not <laughs> be like, fuck this. I'm out. I'm picturing him whistling. It's really funny, too. <laughs> <laughs> So funny. <laughs> I cannot imagine Michael B. Jordan whistling. <laughs> See, I can't whistle. The, that's another problem. You can't whistle? That's, that's probably why I don't like it, because I'm jealous. That's, you can, you are capable of things. <laughs> that's how I think You're it sounds. You're capable of things with your face that no one is capable of, yet you can't whistle. Mm -mm. I whistle in, though. I can't uh, whistle out. I can only suck in. Down, boys. Mm. Wait. Because we have horses. I had horses growing up, and you had to whistle to get them to come out. So I had to learn. Oh, so horses were a part of your life when you were little. Yeah, big part. That's so cool. Yeah, when I went to Virginia in the summers. I can't do it out, though. Yeah, I can't blow out. You can do it. You but can that's it. Whistle. I can't do like a two. I can't do like when people Some people do go, that. wait, do, 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 with a whistle. But <laughs> well, you know what I think? I'm, who are you dating? I which like which like old like <laughs> random old guys from the forties? Are you dating Barney Fife? Like what are you talking about? You know these guys that are just like whistle while you work. We need to change your age bracket on Bumble, dude. <laughs> oh, are you dating podiatrists? No, like, that one happening? was the whistler was a little older than me, but. Um, I think he was just more of a square of a person. Mm -hmm. Or just like a happy, he sounds like a very <laughs> joyful man. That's what my mom said too. She was like, I was like, mom, he's great and all, but I don't like those whistles. And my mom was like, he just means he's, he's happy. Yeah, I, I mean, like, he just seems like a nice man. <laughs> He just seems like he's enjoying life and just sort of going about his day, just <laughs> making some music for himself. Like, did you ever tell him that that's why you were leaving? <sighs> No, there were other elements too. That was like one of the things. Yeah. But it was also, you know. Yeah. But I think that that vibing. is it important because when something that small bothers you about someone, you're just not into them. But he saw my tweet where I said, I don't like these whistles. <laughs> you, you tweeted that? I was like, I'm dating a dude that whistles. I can't do this. <laughs> and then he was, and then he saw, he told me, he was like, you don't like my whistle. How did the tweet do? Great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. <laughs> That's what we do, right? <laughs> you know, a com being a comedian is it's, kind of like we are talking shit about that's everything. Right. Uh, that, truly everything. And if you date a comedian, you're on limits. I'm sorry. It's you're so fucking tough. on limits. And I got to be honest with you. I know a couple comedians that whose wives would not let them make jokes about them. And their careers fucking died. There's a lot of really great comedians out there, men and women, whose spouses were like, dude, you can't talk about me. That's my boundary. And they, their careers didn't go where they should. You can't not talk about what's going on in your personal life. And I always feel bad, but it's like, that's just worth it. And if you don't want me to, if you don't want me to talk shit about you on fucking talk shows, behave better. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that maybe you need to take a good look in the mirror, sir. Yeah. But it is, I think that, like, no. you can't, uh, you don't want someone that wants to be in the spotlight by proxy, because I think a lot of guys are into that. I've definitely had a lot of guys date me because I think they feel like there's some clout in it or something, you know? I've been star fucked, which just means I'm a star. Uh, but I think guys that are too, like, you can't talk about me. It's just like, why are you, who gives a shit? No one knows it's you. Yeah, yeah. Like, why are you taking yourself so soon? Your life isn't ruined. You're not on TMZ. Like, and they're just jokes. Yeah. But to passive aggressively communicate with them through Twitter, like, I mean, that is, <laughs> I think that's more like, why did everyone else hear about it before I did? I know. You know? I know. Like, you knew he was going to read that. I didn't know he had a Twitter, and then I saw him following Well, me. that's a bigger problem, is you were dating someone and you didn't know they were on Twitter. You don't ask any, you really don't ask questions. You do not want to listen. No, I don't. So That's my problem. You were fully dating a guy that, and you didn't it know all, he was on I Twitter. I feel like everyone I've dated the past years, especially being on SNL too, it's just been like a couple months, bye. A couple months, bye. It's really not, it's never gone past I think that's months. healthy. I think that's healthy. Yeah, because I'm just tasting. Excuse me? 
I'm just tasting. I'm sorry. That's like such a Sebastian thing. Is that? I'm just trying to trying to different a little dollop, a little dollop. <laughs> what when you decide to do Sebastian impression? Was there one bit you focused on? I don't think I tried. I think it was. You know, from doing shows with him, we all do a Sebastian impression. But there was a there's a there was a sketch that a writer wrote on SNL. It didn't go to the show, but it went to table, and uh, and he he was like, "Who should I play? Have to play Sebastian?" <laughs> and then he was in my writing office, and my friend was like, "Oh, M Melissa knows Sebastian. Melissa could do it." And I was like, "I get, I'll try." And then it did so well, and then I was <laughs> and I realized, "Oh, I'm having so much fun." And then and then it just like stayed in my heart and I was like I just want to get this one. You on do the show. kind of sound like him a little bit just I mean my voice uh oh I keep playing around I think my microphone went out oh, or headphone. Oh, did it or whatever. I keep uh, No, I think I just stopped talking. Oh, here we go. No, no, no. I finally <laughs> I finally stopped I talking keep fiddling for 10 around seconds. with that. I'm sorry. Oh, I think he says you just have to do okay. the thing. Where? Oh, that's it. Well, my voice is deep to where I can do male impressions. Yeah, yeah, some yeah, of them. yeah. Like I do a, a, a John Mulaney. Oh <laughs> I my do, I, God! I have, this, have you done that on the show? No, I I swear that there's is so many. I've been, so good. Um, wait, hold on. You have to do that is, again. We have to show that to him. My my John Mulaney bit. It's him. Like it's you know. I've done it. I shared it online, but it's just him in quarantine. Like I've noticed. I've been spending a lot of time with my pillows. <laughs> And they are paper thin. It's like if I told a monster truck, hey, why don't you just drive right over my pillows? I want them to feel like I'm sleeping on a tortilla. <laughs> and they do. <laughs> and what's funny is the next morning my wife said, hey, I want to make some breakfast burritos. And, I, and she said, but we have no tortillas. <laughs> and I said, I know where I can find one. <laughs> That's one of my favorite ones too. I mean, that is fucking amazing. These are those have been my, I guess, the past year. Mulaney, Sebastian, and I've been Billy Eilish. I've been doing too for a bit. What's that? Um, Very low. Oh my god. Yeah, it's like, yo, um, I have to take out my Invisalign because <laughs> I wear it, but I I want to eat burritos and tacos. <laughs> and then she sings like this. Don't you know I'm no good for you? I've learned to lose, you can't afford to Quiet when I'm coming home That's how she sings. You I make love me it. cry. I love singing like Billy. I love her so much. That bad guy song is maybe the so sexiest good. song around. Is it weird that she's so young and I love that song and think it's no, sexy? It's, it is. It's so good. So I remember last time... I remember when you were working on the Sia impression and just going, I think I sent it to her or gave it to her or something. And she was just like, how it, she can hit notes that most people just can't hit. Like you can hit notes that Sia and Christina Aguilar can hit. Well, Sia, I, I mean, I don't think I do it that good. I disagree. Not to me. In trouble again. One of my favorite songs is called Ritual, and the vitamins I take are also called Ritual. There's some sort of symbolism going on here. Now, I am not going to lie. During this time where we can't really go anywhere or go to restaurants or go to grocery stores, I've been eating total garbage. And thank God I take these vitamins. They're, I've told you about them before. They're called Ritual Vitamins. Everybody's asking me why my skin is so good. Everyone's asking me why my hair looks so good. It's not my diet because I'm eating complete trash. Uh, but I have been taking the Ritual Vitamins and I think I look amazing. Just not going to lie. Ritual Essentials has the nutrients most of us don't even get from food anyway. Oh, so I can keep eating trash. Clean, absorbable vitamins, no shady additives, no weird ingredients that do more harm to your body than good, quite frankly. Two easy-to-take capsules provide nine nutrients you need to support a strong foundation for your health, which we all need right now more than ever. From D3 to Omega-3, Ritual Essential for Women helps fill in the gaps of your diet. No nausea capsule. Doesn't make me sick. It also has uh, omegas in it. And normally when you take other fish oil pills, you're like burping up wharf for the rest of the day and you just like smell permanently like clam chowder. Ritual has a little like mint in it so that you're not like, you know, smelling like wharf inside your mask. 
You know what I'm saying? You're welcome. Gentle on the stomach, the little mint tab in every bottle to keep things fresh so you don't have that fishy aftertaste I was talking about. Uh, Vegan-friendly, sugar-free, non-GMO, gluten-free, and allergen-free ingredients. There's no trash in here, okay? Uh, the subscription is easy to start. I also love it because you subscribe to it and it just comes to your door because for me, I always forget to order vitamins and I run out and then I'm like, oh, by the time I order it, I'm probably going to have scurvy anyway, so I might as well just stop taking it. Ritual, it just comes to you so you don't have to think about it all the time. BetterHelp does not happen overnight, and right now, Ritual is offering my listeners 10% off during your first three months. Fill in the gaps with your diet with Essential for Women. Get that skin on point, get their hair on point, get those nails on point, get every, get that, get that stuff. Am I allowed to say shit in an ad? Get that shit tight. You know what I mean? People keep asking me about my skin. I'm telling you, this is why it looks really good right now. A uh, small step that is going to help you support a healthy foundation for that body. Visual. visual. I tried to say visit ritual and I just said visual. <laughs> visit ritual.com slash Whitney to start your ritual today. 10% off during your first three months at ritual.com slash Whitney. Don't be ridiculous. Also, someone send these to Crystalia because he looks like shit. Actually, I will ta if if someone orders ritual vitamin if someone orders a ritual vitamin prescription for Crystalia, you have to go to ritual.com slash Whitney. Tag me and say you're ordering vitamins for Crystalia, but actually order them for yourself. I will repost you. Yeah. And then Christina Aguilera, has she seen yours? Yeah, you know what she did not too long ago? She found some old vine of mine where I was doing, oh, oh, and she <laughs> she reposted it. And I was like, I didn't look good. And I was like, she was like, this is so me. And I, was, and I saw it. I was like, oh, why'd you dead that one? I looked so <laughs> bad there. But it was, that was nice of her. Um, yeah, Christina, see ya. Um, I just, yes, yeah, I have a bit. You've seen my see a bit. Though, yeah, we're just sleeping. Sleeping. <laughs> Party girl, don't get hurt. Can't feel anything. When will I learn? I bougie down. I bougie down. Uh -uh. I'm a wonderful good. <laughs> I love her voice. It's so, and you know, she never had voice training. <sighs> like, she never, like, That's took. The best. Yeah. Yeah. That's where I sometimes want, I do want vocal training, but then it's also like, why mess it? Why just? Why not just leave the gifts? Yeah, leave them. Leave them alone. <laughs> Which is one that you like? Like wish you could get, and you're like, I can't get it. Ariana Grande. I really want to learn her singing voice, but she's got a. I mean, that's it's incredible. Really? Her voice is because really it goes good. so high. Yeah, but it's also it's like Mariah too, where it's like there's a oh, layer wow. of it's low, but it's also high at the same time, and I don't know. It's just hard to get. Mm -hmm. So Mariah's is probably hard. Oh yeah. Who are like yeah. the top three voices? I could kind of do a little Mariah. I'm, I mean, I'm showing off here. You I really hope that's are. Okay. Yes, it's quarantine time. We always want, babe, for a moment in time. And I've seen everlasting that you would always be mine. And now you want to be free. So I let you fly. Because you know in my heart, babe, our love will never die. No. <laughs> I'm showing up. You have to. What am I supposed to You're do? You're dazzling. You're a showboat. You're the greatest <laughs> talent of our generation. The people at home deserve it. Yeah. That's, a, that's what I was thinking too. It's like, you know, just entertain. That's all people. It's just it's some all, joy. It's, it's, all, it's it whatever, right now. What else, here's my deal. Whatever Ever. your skill is, pedal it. Yeah. This is what people do now. They get famous for a skill and they go, now I'm going to do something else. It's like, no, bitch, that's what we've paid you for. So I know. That's where I've always, I've had that little battle too. Where I'm like, I don't want to do impressions, but it's like, that's just who I am. But, but what, no, what, oh, you're going to go do the thing everyone else can do? Yeah, I do know. Do you know what I mean? It's ungrateful. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's ungrateful. It's ungrateful you're right. and you're saying, fuck you to God. Yeah. And it's frankly rude. Yeah. You're right. I just, I, I, there's this new thing where it's like, you know, people will be really funny or they'll get really good at comedy and they're like, but now I want to do drama. It's like, bitch, just do the thing you, right. you do. I know. Why? Yeah. You know, I think there's some like weird shame. I mean, I did it too where this new special, I'm doing it just as like a challenge to myself where I'm like, I just don't want to talk about sex in it. 
or like just because I've done that a lot and it's just like a little challenge to myself. Yeah. You know, and I'm I have had a couple of people be like, oh, like I came with my girls night and we, th you know, and, and I do sort of feel like, OK, when people come see me, there's a certain thing they do expect. And I don't want to disappoint anybody because of my own personal goals of evolving. But you you're saying fuck you to your audience. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's why I feel now when I when I get to do stand up, I I I just want to balance it all in. I could still talk about myself or my family and my and and then also weave those impressions in. So there's a nice like mm -hmm. it's just feels balanced. So that way I'm happy, but I'm also yeah making did the you, crowd happy. Did you talk to Sarah after you did the impression of her? When on um, on um, didn't you do it on SNL? Oh yeah, Sarah Silverman. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. She loves it every yes. time. If I run into her at a club, she's always like, "Do me." <laughs> <laughs> so fucking crazy. <laughs> That's an old one too. It's so crazy though. I know. Which one is more? Is she more Sarah, or is is her impression of Sarah better, or Sarah impression of me better? I don't know. I mean. <laughs> It's like saying fuck you to God. I mean. <laughs> it's so fucked up. It's, it's, oh, yeah. I remember the ones that you did in your room. You're like, I like it when it's. <laughs> what one? When I hope you have always liked them. I've I always. Okay. I love okay. you so much. I feel like a, like a sister to you. No, but when it actually truly was um, when I, I don't know how else anyone else could you know, go experience this. It's maybe like the one positive side of like being a known person is that it is really nice to see yourself reflected and you're able to go like, oh yeah, I shouldn't do that. <laughs> like it's the only way I'm able to receive criticism <laughs> in a way without getting defensive. Like, like um, when Instagram stories first started, I had no idea what we were supposed to be doing. Like we were all just like, hey guys, I'm having, I had some water. Like once <laughs> I'm eating my nuts. Like I, I was like, are we supposed to be funny? Are we supposed to be like, like literally documenting every second of our mundane boring lives like i have no idea and she just did one that was like it really made me change the way i did instagram <laughs> stories because you made me see how fucking boring mine were and you're just like um i guess i don't need to do an impression of myself i guess i just like when you when when you uh when you always when you do your skincare routines mm -hmm. too you know you're, mm -hmm. you're just and we're gonna roll some oil <laughs> here that helps the glow and I'm just gonna do that for a couple hours. <laughs> hey guys, it's my roll roller. <laughs> couple hours. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you were like, you were like, um, it, it's funny because when I try to do an impression of you doing an impression <laughs> of me, I try to do an impression and I don't. I can just talk. But you're like, so guys, like, if <laughs> Juice has been in the car, <laughs> oh yeah, 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 that one for two hours, like, does it go bad? Can like, I drink it or not? <laughs> like. Let me know. Let me know. Let me know because <laughs> I'm going to drink it. <laughs> just just the, everyone was dying because it was just like, <laughs> uh, like how annoyed I am. <laughs> the question I just asked you guys about my juice. Like, what? I was just like, why am I always so pissed off? <laughs> like, no, that's just like one time. Like, like sometimes. Just like, don't post it. <laughs> Because it was just like, anyway, let me know. <laughs> like, I got bored making the story. <laughs> it made me realize that I would get bored doing it. And I was like, okay, I should only do stories that I am entertained by. No, you could do anything. It made me, it made it clear to me that I was like phoning it in. Because, <laughs> and it, that I was hate fucking my Instagram stories. No, yours, yours are great. <laughs> you have a lot of good stuff too. All the animals. Yeah, it's too many animals. I got to take it down a notch. You, I feel like, are doing a lot of different things over quarantine. Let's tell everybody all the stuff that you're doing. You're doing Ooh. YouTube lives like every... Oh, no, no, no. Week? I just did... No, no, no. I did... I was doing a Melissa Hobby Time. Uh-huh. Monday through Friday. Okay. And it's like Monday I would do polymer clay. I have clay and I make figurines. Oh, cool. I have a little oven and I bake them. Okay. It's just fun. It's not what murderers uh. do. <laughs> it's not. It's what stable people do. <laughs> That's the thing. I swear, I'm, I'm, I'm doing okay. I mean, with just the hobbies and stuff. This uh, is a woman with a full life. She's not marrying you. <laughs> She's got her figurines that she puts in the oven. 
Um, Tuesdays. Oh, I was doing like an Owen Wilson meditation. Were so you would, leading people would, through a meditation as guide, Owen Wilson? Yes, yes. And then Wednesday. And that's on your Instagram? Mm-hmm. These were like Instagram lives. I took this week off just for my own peace. Peace. Um, Wednesdays is bird watching, which I would draw a bunch of birds, color them, place them around my home <laughs> and bird watch and learn about them. And I would set the their sounds of what they sound like and then go, oh, there's one. Oh. And then, you know, and then I'd have Fred Armisen came on and Kevin, I mean, uh, oh, Michael Rappaport. And the they're, best. and they're just like, oh shit, look at that bird. <laughs> and there's just like a little drawing, you know? And it was so, that's been fun. I think people, that that's one's amazing. one of my favorites. That's amazing. And that my sister came up with that idea. I was like, just draw them. Cause you can't really leave home. No. It's not good to, you know? And so Thursdays, that's really fun. uh, crocheting. And, and I've noticed like I'll crochet and, and karaoke sing songs and then and it's crochet like drawing. it's very soothing yeah it's you like and I like hobbies where there's a result at the end mm -hmm. and proof that I did it yeah crochet seems very rewarding it is like here's the scarf and it's just so it's in your in my mind like I'm just hearing one uh one two three one two three it's just Rap. like a number it's like it almost admits. meditative yeah hypnotic yeah I, Ooh, I like it. that. It's really cool. Yeah. I could teach you. There's, I mean, I'm a visual learner, so I can't like read, oh, here's the crochet pattern. You have like, to do I, it. I don't like it. That's why I struggled in school. I can't read it. I need a visual, I need to see someone do it. And then yeah. I'm like, I got it. Yeah. I'm done. I, I get it fast. When's if, your birthday? October 9th, Libra. Ooh. Ooh. I don't know. I don't. I don't know any of that. I don't, I don't. I'm just curious. Oh, okay. I feel like horoscope people listening at that moment wanted me to ask. Okay. So yeah, they'll tell you us. Guys. They'll, they'll tell, tell us what that means. Yeah. Because, well, you know, my theory about it is not that yeah. there's some sort of like okay. supernatural thing. I think that where your birthday falls is very important in the way that your psyche develops more because of the other holidays you're competing with during your birthday. Mm. You know what I mean? Halloween. I've time. talked about this before. Yeah. If you're competing with Halloween, you're going to get less attention on your birthday. My birthday was the first day of school, which set the stage for you work all the time. Even on the days that you're supposed to get attention, everything's about work. You know, people that are born in January, Capricorns are always like not needy, like work a lot because there's no money left to throw them. They had just had holidays, oh Christmas, my gosh. Christmas. Yeah. No that one. Makes, that's my brother and my, my mom. No one is special if their birthday is January 5th. No one cares. We just partied for two weeks. We have, <gasps> don't have any money left. Here's a fucking re gift of a candle. Oh. You know? I think October, early October. That's kind of a good birthday time. I think so too. It's a little it's bit like, after September. Like you yeah, just then, got back into school. Yeah, but you're then having, it's like these holidays are coming. Yeah. And then now it's, and you're just feeling a little like fall girl. Fall, you're going to get some sweaters. <laughs> no, get in those scarves. getting that, like J. Crew <laughs> mittens. But like, like Leo's, everyone says like people born in late July, August are like, you know, narcissistic and need a lot of attention. Like because it was August, like they could have a party. They were like at the beach. Like there was no competition from school like people wanted yeah. to have their last like rum spring up before school was back you know like um so i feel like that's really why the horoscopes matter that so makes, that's why i'm, I'm that curious makes sense. i'm curious when people are born just based on when they celebrated their birthdays yeah not so much about that like that shit sense. you know yeah and then what are you doing fridays drawing drawing is yeah. on instagram live yeah so you're doing instagram lives every day yeah but i this is impressive i mean I don't know. It helped once I just said, oh, today's could be a 10 minutes. Today's could be 20. It doesn't need to be an hour. You know, once I just said I took the pressure off. <laughs> but do you respond when people comment? <laughs> no, keep your face there. Keep I know. It was so cute. Turn it. Come back. Sorry. We're okay. now just fully taking pictures of this dog because this is the cutest thing ever. Penny, put your head there. Yes, Penny. Um, okay. Well, I'm going to let you go soon, but I'm going to do a little speed round of stuff. Okay. Best piece yeah. of what? She didn't pee or anything, right? She was a good girl. I don't think so. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> lipstick on you. Um, okay. So we are going, I'm going to do a like, speed round of a couple things I ask everybody. Okay. Which is very important. Okay. What is the best piece of advice you've gotten? Ooh. This show, we want people to turn it off and be better people, smarter people, stronger people, more emotionally resilient people. This show has a purpose. So I always like to disseminate everybody's best piece of advice that they've gotten. <sighs> It doesn't have to be minute? the best. You oh, can okay. name a couple things. It doesn't have to be okay. one. I'm not going to make you pick. 
not a dick. Um, like just about relationships, about like, I'll, do you want me to list mine while you're thinking? I mean, yeah, that helps. But I think that what you just said earlier about being with someone that at least likes their job. And Ugh. I think that's a really good um good one because i for the longest time was like oh if he doesn't like his job i'm just gonna make up for it by being funny and entertaining and like i'm gonna help him find a new job and like i kind of like that he's miserable because then i'm the light of his life like i just was like oh god it took yeah. me i just wish someone had told me that when i was like 25 yeah you know that's, that's if someone's job. miserable with their job they're miserable yeah that's up to them. yeah there's no way um piece of advice it took me a long time to process this piece of advice but when I heard it, it was it's an incredible piece. It took me forever to implement it. But someone said, it's not about the other person. It's about who you are when you're with the other person. So a lot of times in relationships, we're like, is he good? Is he honest? Is he fun? Is he interesting? And he's he this? Is he that? Instead of going like, who am I when I'm around? Am I the best version of myself when I'm around that person? Yeah. Am I being funny? Am I taking care of myself? Am I being interesting? Am I being the best? You know what I mean? instead of putting it all on them and the scorecard being on what they're doing start yeah. going like what am i doing what am i am i sleeping well am i like seeing my yeah friends? yeah yeah am i you know prolific at work am i li like that was a huge paradigm shift yeah i think for me it's like oh if i'm if i feel any anxiety near this person go bye run. Bye. Run. Not butterflies, not passion. It's your body telling you, get out of there. Yeah. Because then I put them first and yeah. myself. Will your gut is telling you, turn yeah. around. Yeah. And we do, we're so disconnected from our intuition at this point. I think you might have said that somewhere. I don't know. Yeah, I do. I yeah, say yeah. that a lot. You, a lot that. of my wisdom is from good <laughs> advice from you. I'm serious. Yeah. Really? No, I don't. I, I believe it. It I, really helps. I agree. Yeah. You <laughs> No, I mean, I, I feel. No, it's it's good. I feel um, like we've had lots of good breakthroughs together. Yeah. Because I think for me, as soon as I learn something, I like have to tell. I, I, sometimes I worry that I'm coming off bossy or micromanagey or didactic, but I'm just like, oh my God, like it would have saved me it would so save much other people too. time and energy. Yeah. Like, let me just pass this off. Even this person thinks I'm annoying or like, even if they're not even going to hear it yet. Yeah. I feel like a moral obligation to pass it on. That's because I, for the longest time, thought a pit in my stomach meant it was like, he's the one, you know, a pit in my stomach was like, look, we have so much passion. Like, we're soulmates. Like, yeah. Sid and like, it was like, no, this is your body telling you to get the fuck out of there. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think that like, re I understand now that relationships should calm you down and be additive, not subtractive and not adrenalize you and stress you out. You know, like mm -hmm. you can have like a fun, hot affair, but like, you know that adrenaline becomes addictive and then you yeah. get addicted to a person that you don't like that much that shouldn't be in your life it's a nightmare and then like all the neurochemicals start firing and then you're addicted to somebody that you can't there's nothing worse than being like i don't even like you but i'm on my way Ooh. over it's yeah such a motherfucker get yeah. out before you get addicted it's like seeing the whatever just yeah, don't I, take a I bite of the pizza. You'll never stop eating it. Just yeah, don't take that first bite. I didn't like when I had those relationships where I would, I remember them ending the breakup and I would, I forgot after I was like, who am I? Because I got so wrapped up in the person. I felt like I, I lost myself. I was like, where's Melissa? Oh, Jesus. I'm talking like he talks. I don't have, I'm not talking like me. Ugh. Well, you're that's an impressionist. Like, that must that, be hard. But that's that's the problem too. Is in, as an impressionist, if I'm around someone so much, I'm starting to mimic them. I'm I'm absorbing everything, and it is so hard sometimes when you get in an entrenched relationship like that to know when you begin and they end, and where you end and they begin. And yeah, it's like, so what is a healthy, sexy, fun relationship where you still have are not like, you know you're surgically yeah. detached from each other as well how do you maintain Sorry about my posture no please i feel like the mic has been i feel like i was like this a lot of time but you could still pick me up this way yeah okay yeah i should stay like this we have very fancy microphones <laughs> i know so we both talk incredibly loud as well <laughs> um, um I, I, i'm gonna think i'm sure things will pop up in my mind later for advice no but i think that it's basically it i'm, I'm really interested in this because i think people are right now <laughs> in quarantine with their others where i imagine it's like actually physically hard to tell where they 
end and the other person <laughs> begins, but it is really hard to maintain your own identity when you're in a relationship. And I just think it's really important that people remember you are allowed to be different than your partner. You're allowed to like different things. You're allowed to want different things. You're allowed to like dislike different movies. I'm now at the point where in the beginning of a relationship, people think I'm coming off confrontational or like being like sassy or bit, but I just want to be so clear about the things I don't like so that they know like, cause I would just shape shift. People be like, I love murder documentaries. I'd be like, me too. I don't, I don't, uh, some of them, but like, you know what I mean? <laughs> I pretend I like something I didn't like. And then I had to sort of perform. I had cast myself as the perfect mate for this person. Pretended I liked a bunch of things I didn't like. And then six months in, you start getting resentful cause you're mm -hmm. always acting. And then you're actually having to watch hockey or whatever the fuck you pretended you wanted to like oh, and then you get resentful and then it's like you don't understand me it's like no it's not that the person doesn't understand you you just lied mm -hmm. all that time and i think that a lot of times when we think that we're just like being harmonious and like getting along and compromising we're actually lying you're being a liar it's not nice or noble to pretend you like shit you don't like no, no I'm, I'm one of the guys i'll just go have wings yeah i love watching football like <laughs> You're just Wings. a liar. You're a liar. <laughs> like you're a liar. It's not cute. It's not sexy. You're yeah. not one of the guys. Like it's just like a. It's just a. He can handle you not liking some of the things he likes. I know. Do you know what I mean? Probably. It, we got the biggest fight more. over marriage story. This guy that I'm flirting with, and I just was like, if I don't say that I don't like this movie, I'm gonna have to watch it again. So I just have to like be straight up about it and be like, here, like. I, and they're like, well, why are you so confrontational? I'm like, no, I think this is just me l literally telling the truth. A yeah. lot of times girls l pretend they like things they don't like because we've been wired to believe that you guys can't handle disagreements and that you interpret it as like a rejection to your ego. I'm so worried about your ego mm. that I don't want to criticize anything that you like. Yeah. We've been wired to just be like, yeah, no, I totally, I love rugby. Yeah, I remember I, I, when I was dating that one guy you know about him. we were in aspen and i i'm already i'm already no 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 this, I, I can't, already, this already feels right you're already I, no no, no. With, it's already bad you're already in a place with no oxygen no yeah <laughs> <laughs> you already nobody was like giving the option like maybe we could ski or something and Ugh. Ugh. i said no because my kneecaps they're bad but kneecaps plural my, both of them How? yes i've had inflamed kneecaps oh i it was a real hard time for me to walk <laughs> What? The, no. So, so anyway, stuck too much I, I, What? <laughs> hey, no, I'm not that. No, Why your kneecap. No, so this inflamed? was a few years ago. I don't know what happened. I, I, I don't. I'm not sure how they, but something went bad in my knees, and I had to go through physical therapy and Jeez. have tape on my kneecaps for a few months because I couldn't. I don't know what happened. So I don't mess with that stuff. But I was almost going to agree to skiing. Ooh. Never done it in my life. Oh. No. Yeah, you don't have a broken shoulder from snowboarding. Yeah, no, I, I don't. I don't like that stuff. Broke my shoulder oh. because I didn't want to tell a guy like, you know, what? I'll just stay here. Oh, yeah. I remember reading that in your book. I'll just stay here. You go have fun. We'll see each other in like four hours. Yeah, no. I don't like that stuff. If a guy I'll stay doesn't... inside and read and smell stuff. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, smell books or things. What? I'm just saying, I want to be inside or in a garden. I don't want to go do something like if adventurous. You need, if you do need a woman that like goes down the slopes with you, <laughs> like I just, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like no. if you can't handle being away for four hours from your woman and her not having the same skill set as you, like, I mean, Sunny <laughs> of Sunny and Shit is dead. <laughs> oh, ran right. into a tree. What Oof. are we doing? Why is anyone ever skiing? No. Skiing no. is also, if you're not a ski, you grew up rich. Like, you can't just all of a sudden have grown up rich. Like, if you didn't start skiing at five, it's not happening. Yeah, because you're close to the gr ground. And it's all three grand just to try it. <laughs> It's like, I'm not willing to put in the invest. I went to go snowboarding. It's like the shoes and the clips mm -mm. and the hats and the shit and the fucking sh It's just like, I, I, there's no way it's this fun. I know. There's no just, way it's worth $3,000. That's so weird. I, I just want to just give me a little sled. Sit inner on tube. It. Nothing fun. More fun than an inner tube. Yeah. Nothing more fun. I remember that. Why do we have to bring sharp, <laughs> giant daggers and put them on each of our feet? Like, what are we doing? Why is this shit even legal? <laughs> They're giant knives and we're going 80 miles an hour with no oh. brakes. 
call it. it yeah. Skiing is w- uh, wild. That's crazy. Skiing's canceled. <laughs> Time's up on skiing. Why would anyone ski? Can you imagine? Think about it. If someone, if skiing didn't exist and someone came up with the idea today, jail. It'd be the yeah. fire festival of sports. Did you bring up ballet about that or something? I have a whole bit about that. Okay, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. I think I saw that. I remember I, that. My new hour. Oh, that's so funny. I talk about ballet for a good 15 minutes. Yes, and how I think it should go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's got to go. It's a sickening. <laughs> you guys will see that when we're back on the yeah. road in six years. Yeah. Um, and then I also, oh, I want to ask, the best, if you think of any other advice yeah. left now, since you are now on SNL and you're now so fancy, have you learned anything about like money since you started making it that you think that people in their 20s would benefit from hearing? Well, I think saving is always good. I think I've always been a saver. What do you spend money on that works where you're like, that was worth it? Uh, I buy a purse. I feel worse. I don't feel better. I don't buy material things. Yeah, me either. I, my problem, I'll buy little I, junk things. I, I, yeah, no, I like, you know, sometimes I'll buy, like today I was going to buy a garden gnome this morning. Stuff that's, I guess that makes me happy, but it's weird. But um, I think, look, I just got my first little, my townhouse. Whoop, that was an investment. Buying real estate and spending money on your space is key. Yeah. Investing in your space. Don't buy the shoes, buy the fucking coffee table. Yeah. I, I didn't, I don't know. I'm not the best with, I just, I, I, I'll i save, but. Yeah, that's good. Um, that's good. What's the best gift you've ever gotten? But I, I was going to also say, I think now having a little more, like I save, but I also, I donate. And I think that is, feels that's good. That's awesome. Because, I mean, I try. That's yeah. awesome. But I mean, but it's like that, that it should go out. I don't know. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. awesome. And you get a tax break. Donating, you also get to pay less taxes later. Yep. Um, so you can be selfish and benevolent at the same time. Yeah, and then but I spoil my penny. Yeah, there are a lot of dogs. Things. Yes, that's key. Yeah, dog. Dog. Get a dog. 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 If you're a loner People, person yep. and you're thinking too much Don't of yourself. Don't buy the shoes and the purse. Get a, adopt a dog. Yeah. And that is going that, to. That's a big one. Yeah. That's it's not life. cheap. It's not past, cheep if you're going to need daycare and people to help you walk. In, right. All that. But I, I, but I do look at like this past couple of years. Oh, what a year now with Penny. And yeah. I, I don't feel that missing piece of lacking something uh, to care. I didn't have um, a, uh, someone to care for. Yeah. Cause I, I think never that had people that. like us, we want to care about something. We want to love something. We want that unconditional love bond, but people are the worst. So, do- <laughs> <laughs> so dogs are like the perfect level of like, okay, this is not, cause even like I need to give, I need to love things. But when I do that with people or try to rescue people, it just blows up in my face. Yeah. Dogs so actually dogs. appreciate it. Mm-hmm. They actually appreciate the love you give them. It doesn't chase them away and they're capable of unconditional love. Which and they keep you warm at night. What more do you want? feel so cozy with her it's so funny i'm always it, the breed of dogs people get or the kind of dog they get to me is always so fascinating and penny your dog it's i think she's a, my guess is she's like a whip it lab yeah for sure which is so perfect for you yeah yeah and it's so what's funny about penny is she has a really worried eyebrows and face you're like that too you are you are the epitome of joy and spontaneity and fun and buoyancy but there's also a A thinking a a little bit of uh yes overthinking in a good way in a good way how was dave Grohl? man yes like he told the story about how he went he got stoned he took an edible by accident and went to like john lennon's house or tom lennon whatever the guy from the beatles um Taylor Swift was like singing a song. He was so high and Taylor Swift was like singing a song. And he was like, what song is that? And she was like, Everlong. Like it was like his, like he was so high <laughs> that he didn't even, like he just, he just tells stories in such a funny fucking way. I'm so obsessed with him. Cause then you hang out with someone like that and you're like, I'm waiting for that. Yes. I want that. I, that's what I'm talking about. Tam. If you were pivoting hard here, if you could date any celebrity right now, who would it be? I think it would be like Dave Grohl. Yeah. Well, he's married, but yeah. But you're like, if they weren't, because my thing is, I do think Eminem and I should date. Oh. Don't you think? 
I've been talking about a lot on the pod. Oh, oh, I want to date Shia LaBeouf. He's, I think, married now. And I uh, think Shia is... Not well. A lot of work. Yeah. I think he's very brilliant. But I think that would be a lot of... I think it would just maybe be too intense. I think so. I think, like, I you actually like to chill. I do. You want someone chill... You don't need yeah. any extra drama in your life. SNL is like a like it's already a, a big work thing, you know. Like we have big emotions in our jobs. There's yeah. high stakes. It's very intense. I don't think we want that in our personal. No, no, no. We want Someone calm in our personal. Calm life. blanket. You know, like Eminem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why Eminem? I just feel like Eminem and I would get along very well. Uh, he talks about his addiction stuff. I know a lot about it. I'm in a program, mm -hmm. so we would connect on that level. Uh, I feel like he is like comics and rappers are pretty similar, and you know what I mean. Just in terms of, <laughs> you're not just stay with. Hold me. on, hold on. You saw me blink. Yeah, you did. You just. I I did. I didn't hear what you said right now. What happened? I don't know. I don't know. You just tuned me out. No, I'm sorry. Yes. What do you? But what do you think happened? I don't know. Did you get bored? I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where I don't even know where I went. This happens a lot. Okay. So and and people know. And I wow, you noticed that. Yeah. No, you just went somewhere. Oh my god. You just like you just what? Okay. Like, dead start, start, the eyes. start again. You had doll eyes. Start, <laughs> start you again, went please. Vacant eyes. <laughs> did did you? Do most people just let that slide? Oh my gosh. How do you? That's only what, what, you. The, you're very <laughs> no. It's people that observant are what was good. Your plan. I don't. <laughs> this is uh, John DeWalt knows this about me. That Allison. Know, they know that yeah. it's for good friends that when I'm hanging out, they they can tell when I, this happens. Yeah, but nothing happened in my head. But so you it just, just go with it. You're just like I can. <laughs> I'll be able. My to dad does this too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we just keep going. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And then yeah, I'm being but, a liar. But then and I'll go. So what do you think? <laughs> screwed <laughs> then i really had to just go well i think yeah why not <laughs> and then you fucking put your charm on and do an impression and then no one fucking calls you on it right that's how that's what i've done a lot of my you life distract yes you so this is this ch this charm thing is a total maladaptive behavior it's a manipulation like i just this is, if I wanted someone to tune me out, I'd hang out with a man. I wouldn't hang out with you. I would have had you. I would have had Crystal Lee on the podcast. I had you here because I thought you would listen to me. So how long is the blip? I don't know. That was a couple seconds, huh? Mm-hmm. Where do you go? Do you go? It's just, you go nowhere. It's just, I'd rather be anywhere but here. No, no, it's not even that. I, I'm just my gonna... brain just, just it kind of just slowed down. Mm -hmm. And it maybe it's like a lack of food or something. Oh yeah, maybe mm -hmm. you have low blood sugar. I do. Okay, I have a little bit. All right, we have to get you to eat. But I, I, I do think dating Eminem would be good for me. I do feel like you could date. I wish. I think Tom Hardy's not single. I feel like he'd be good for one of us to date. Mm. You want someone like chill, who's like doesn't talk a lot, right? Like a giant black dad. I, I. <laughs> <laughs> all right now i think yeah someone who could enjoy silence i one of my favorite things is just sitting next to friend or person and, and we're both working on something and just having to company together together quiet in together quiet is oh. the best it's so nice that to me is like the ultimate intimacy yeah we've done that before yeah outside we've done that and we're just sitting like this yeah just staring like we're together <laughs> in totally different places is the best. Mm -hmm. And then when you do yeah. feel like you can check in at any moment, but nothing feels like a rejection. It's not like, are you mad? Are you like, yeah, there's no, no pressure to perform. Yeah, I would love to find that. Because I do think that we're in a time, this quarantine thing is, I think we're all going to come out with less friends because the people that we didn't want to catch up with over the break yeah. are going to realize that we didn't like them that much in the first place. Mm -hmm. Like, I just was friends with you because I saw you every day at work, mm -hmm. you know? I'm not going to like Zoom with you. Mm -mm. You know, there's a lot of people where I'm like, oh, that was like a proximity friendship. We were really only friends because I didn't have a choice. Is Brad, Brad Pitt single? He is single. I think I, I would go for Brad Pitt. Well, that is a hot take. That is a hot take. She's willing to make an exception for a white guy. Brad, 
I do. Th- we got to manifest this shit. Okay, this is my Brad Pitt impression. You know okay? how, d- <laughs> uh, uh, what's his name? Deschanel. What's his name? Nope. Josh Duhamel. Josh Duhamel married Fergie because he talked about her on a talk show. Mm. Anyway, so let's put that out there. Can you have a Brad Pitt impression? Yeah. Okay. It's real silly, too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he does that in, in Glorious. He's. Well. Now what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna see my. Oh no, wait, I go. Uh, see my friend Joe over there. Wave hi to Joe. If you don't listen to him, Joe over here is gonna shoot your eyes out. Okay, <laughs> I have to. I can't remember. I did a video. I gotta. I gotta I'm rewatch that. I'm gonna post stuff. it. I'm no, gonna no. post it. It's like it, we're it's gonna just get that this. like slow like. He's been doing that in the past, like Tarantino films, where he's just, all right. What do you say uh, we have that dinner? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> but I love Brad Pitt. I mean, I feel like he's really, <laughs> so funny. he's grown, and I think he's a, he's a beautiful spirit. He's a beautiful spirit. He talks openly about getting sober. Mm-hmm. And and that one article, I think he was like, I'm just so sick of hearing about myself. He was like sick of himself. That's hot, but that's so like, no. But why I mean, are you like, doing an interview for? No, oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> but I, I, I don't are know. Are you sick of yourself <laughs> as you pose for I, on a mountain shirtless? <laughs> oh man, he's great. I know he's great, and he's it's interesting. Like he's one of the few people that have stayed famous and stayed loved, beloved, and he like went through so kind much, of famously. Yeah. Mm, yeah you know what I mean we still love him can't stay mad at you Brad he's one of those I can't stay mad that's when you know you. that's my definition of love by the way you can't stay mad mm. you're always gonna get mad it's just can't stay mad mm. we don't stay mad at Brad Pitt no no we don't stay mad at Jen we don't stay mad at Mel Gibson apparently we don't stay mad <laughs> oh I don't know there's much a lot of people about Mel yeah he's just like publicly did some wild shit and we like we're like ah <laughs> ah, but brave heart I yeah, can't stay mad at you yeah you called your wife a whore for like 40 minutes on a voicemail it's fine oh, boy yeah well yeah I'd say Brad Pitt though okay anything else I just else we need to cover thanks for having me and I love you Whitney I love you so much this is fun we're gonna like spend more time together over the quarantine yep you think yeah when do you think this is gonna be over it's your gut tell you June? You think June? You think I, we're going to be back in clubs and no, theaters in June? No, I don't think we'll you be think, back okay. in clubs. Yeah. I think that'll be next year. I just want to share one story. I don't know. Of I really don't know. That happened to me. I went to Coffee Bean. I hadn't gone in any places, but I was going to see my mom in a nursing home and she can't leave, right? They're locked in. And I was in a, I brought her some coffee, right? So I go to the store coffee bean no one's in there most of it is the drive through starbucks right so it said no service without a mask i had gloves and i had my mask and i go in and the woman has her mask i order the coffee and the gymnastics that went on like the choreography that was already kind of like implicitly known between the two of us so she rings it up steps away I waited till she stepped away. I leaned in. I did my credit card like this, Mm -hmm. stepped away. She made my coffee. And when she handed me my coffee, I was six feet away from her. She put it down, kind of pushed it, backed up. Then I stepped forward and took it. Like it was such a complicated set of moves that we implicitly do. And I just was like, that took, that was so complex. Like, when are we going to get back to a place where someone's going to be in a comedy club and just take a drink from a waitress and put it in their mouth? I mean, that's what our job is. Our job is for people to walk into a dark place with a thousand people and just take a drink from a stranger and put it in their mouth. <laughs> like, it's like, when are we going to get back to that comfort level? You know, I'm sure there's going to be all sorts of, and hopefully there'll be the vaccine and the antiviral, but it's just, do you remember when we used to just take a glass from a person whose hands were, we don't even know how many people touched it, who touched it, and just put it in our mouths in the dark? 
shoulder to shoulder with thousands of people who are exhaling for two hours. And I'll, yeah, that's what performing as a comedian is. And then you're asking people to like breathe on each other. And then you're also asking them to not think about any of that. Like I think music, you'll be able to go to a music festival and be like, we have our cups. Outside. We can have our masks. And But for us, it's like low, I mean. Comedy, we're asking people to also be at their most carefree. Yeah. So my question was like, even if you are gonna be open the doors, even if people are gonna come, are they gonna be in the mindset where they feel like they can just forget? You're asking people to forget about their problems. And is everything gonna be a little reminder? What's the thing and the and the this and the and the and the bill and the bill comes and the pen and what pen do I use and the and the where do I put my jacket and this person or that person or you're talking someone coughs. Mm -hmm. Is the show over when someone coughs? Is everyone thinking about that all of a sudden? Yeah, you're right. It's going to might take a while. It's just even if you can't open the doors, are people going to be emotionally ready? Is it going to be con an environment conducive to comedy? I also feel like I, it'd be as weird. I, as I touch my face. <laughs> I know. I touched it <laughs> after I washed I, I, Yeah, I'd feel weird to be like, come to my show. Let's sell out. I don't want to do that for any time. And no. Yeah, it feels morally that feels weird. wrong because it's also a lot of people live with their parents or grandparents or visit you know what i mean like mm -hmm. i think that when you live in la and new york we're so disconnected from families like a lot of people like go see their grandma every sunday or go see their mom on the weekend like you know their mom takes care of their kids like it's not just about young people interacting with young people yep you know oh boy so it's just this weird thing where you know our job is asking people to get in a room and just breathe all over each other this is where it just gets devastating and this is where, this is where, this is the last thing I want to say is that us performing and stuff right now, it's been interesting. Like I did an Instagram live with your buddy Cecily Strong yesterday and like we were kind of funny, but it, it's, it, it's this weird time where I never know if I'm supposed to be being funny and silly, like as being silly, disrespectful. Like it's this weird time where what's funny is changing. And I think something that's so great about you is like there's this kind of Corona proof <laughs> energy, like, like you're not talking about things that are charged you're not talking about politics like just like anytime someone goes to your page you know it's going to be fun you know it's going to be like effervescent and buoyant and it's not you know a lot of my favorite comedians i'm like i love you i just don't want to watch you talk about coronavirus for 45 minutes right now do you know what i mean yeah With all your comedies about that like everything's political like i kind of want to break from that right now yeah 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 i'm getting to a point where i, I only look at the news once a day because i'm just like i cannot keep Same. just putting this shit in my veins all day yeah it's, it's it's too rough. depressing and i i can't stay funny if i'm just like consuming this constantly yeah you know me too so i think it's important that it's like we make sure that but it's it's just weird because it's like there is this line like i don't want to be disrespectful but i also want to make sure that i'm staying funny like it's just like an interesting time to see how comedy is going to evolve right now you know yeah and i think that's why i'm just leaning into things that bring comfort for me yeah. that will hopefully bring comfort to others. Yeah. But that's what I'm trying to do. But yeah, it felt weird once it started happening. I was like, oh, I don't care about my dreams and goals. I just, I just want to. Yeah, it's interesting. I don't know. It it's, shifted. It, a giant paradigm shift happened, like, especially, I think, for ambitious people where I just was like, I think it's a little thing called perspective. <laughs> I think we all got it real quick, especially overachiever types. We're just like, oh, nothing really matters the way we thought it did yeah all of a sudden but i think that for people that are overachievers especially the fact that other people aren't achieving anything either helps us be able to be like okay we don't have to compare and despair with other people right now either because they're not doing anything do you know what i mean mm -hmm. we never would have been able to take a three-month break while other people were generating stuff right yeah but yeah it, it is really interesting how the existential crisis came in real fast <laughs> like nothing matters i'm just going to draw birds <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. But there is an interesting of like time to experiment with like who am I when I'm not doing things out of obligation, rushing, like who am I? Like it's been an interesting question um, that I feel like hopefully all of us will be more developed, interesting people after this. I do think in terms of comedy, we will all be worse at comedy. Yeah. Because we haven't done it for a year, <laughs> but we will have more interesting things and more introspective things to say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Even though we will be very rusty. But I think we'll be s grateful to be like back on stage. You're like, oh, yeah, that'll feel nice. Can't wait. I know. I love you very much. Love um, you too, Whitney. Melissa, Thanks for having me. Wait, it's your Instagram, just your name, right? Uh, 
Melissa V Comedy. Melissa V Comedy. Twitter and Instagram. And don't write elephants. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. I don't know all the shit that Benton normally says, and I know I have to say it, but I just uh, subscribe. Uh, you know what? You're an adult. You know what to do. <laughs> I love you guys. I always end this very awkwardly. Melissa Villasenor is the best around. Nothing's gonna ever keep it <laughs> Thanks, Thank Wendy. You. Oh my gosh, my ears started hurting for some reason. It got warm in there. Oh, oh it's because oh, no, of the mask. That's what it is. We had it my on. My mask the is whole like time. ripping into my ear.